Hello people, fire worms within channel. Oh, in this video I'm going to tell you about my favourite death metal for 2017. Um, I wouldn't say 2017 was brilliant for death metal. The kind of death metal that I like anyway, but it was pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of releases which I enjoyed. Um, I'm going to count through some of them. I've got a top 15, which is in reverse order. I will get to those sooner soon. But first, I've got a few uh, bubbling unders, honourable mentions, etc. That sort of thing. I'm going to go through them quickly. More to school, Wounds Deeper Than Time. Uh, yeah, these guys came back with a nice heavy album. Good to hear them back. Typical Yankee death metal. Heavy, grooving stuff, like Bolt Thrower pretty much. Uh, next, More Principium Est, Embers of a Dying World. One of my favourite, well, not favourite melodic death metal bands, but much better than uh, a lot of the old school melodic death bands like In Flames, I, uh, I should name one. Much better than those guys. So yeah, that was another cool album by them. Embers of a Dying World. Flesh Doll, Hearts of Darkness, catchy heavy death metal. Not sure where they're from. Uh, Bleak Flesh, uh, Overcoming Reality EP. Nice technical death metal, only a little EP, very nice riffs, catchy. Obsidium, Lesson of Hatred, very technical death, a la Necrophagist. Vocals, not my favourite in this one, but uh, music was amazing. Next is Unperfectum, Neomenia. Uh, Melodeth again, uh, yeah, I like it, very melodic, very catchy, lots of keyboards in this one. So if you don't like keyboards, steer clear of that one. Uh, next is Roger Johansson, Garda Pans. Roger, he's in a million bands, I mean, the guy is just a death metal freak. He's been in so many bands, um... He released this one under his own name. Interesting old school. As usual, it's old school death. That's all the guy does. Old school death metal. This one had a difference because he had quite a lot of keyboards in it, strangely. Um, yeah, interesting album. Well worth a listen. Uh, next is Necropolis, The Fate of Flesh EP. Only a little small EP. Basically, uh, a death clone band, death the band that is, you know, Chuck Schuldiner. Uh, yes, enjoyable, slightly average death copy, if you like. You know, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to uh, death-influenced uh, bands. And uh, I love them, so when I hear this, I give it a shot. Anyway, next is Incinerator, Stench of Distress. This is pure filth, retro death, buzzy guitars, like angry bees. Quite enjoyable. Next is Apotheon, Mechanically Consumed. Just a three tracker, uh, technical death. I enjoyed it, I like tech death. Next up is Exhumed, Death Revenge. Um, yeah, catchy death metal. Sometimes coming close to a few death riffs, death the band that is. Uh, yeah, not bad. I, I quite enjoyed this album. Next is Beneath, Ephemeris. Um, good, heavy, crunching death metal from France, I believe. Uh, next up is a small four-tracker, Skyfire, Liberation in Death. One of my favourite old-school melodic death metal bands. Good to hear them back. It wasn't an amazing EP, but it was good enough. I enjoyed it. And it, I'll, I'd, I'd be interested in a full length from them again. 
Next up, Spectrum of Delusion, Esoteric Entity. This one is a full-on tech death uh, release. Vocals, not my best, not my favourite. Music is very interesting, lots of whittling, bass, lots of bass in this album. So if you enjoy that twangy, clean bass sound, then I'd give Spectrum of Delusion a listen. Next is Archaic, hard-hitting, fast tech death, very fast. The vocals it can be annoying for me. Um, when they use a normal death growl, I like it more. But riffs, very heavy, machine gun-like power riffs in this uh, tech death band, Archaic Nemethia. Right, and now we get to my top 15 death metal albums of 2017. Here we go, number 15, Undrask Battle Through Time. No idea who these guys are. Must be a brand new band, or maybe if they're not brand new, I'm totally underground. Anyway, they came out with a really cool melodic death metal album earlier on in the year. Something like the Mind's Eye era, uh, Dark Tranquility, mixed with a more modern version of, um, not more modern version, but a more modern sounding Amon and Marth. Um, so there you have Undrask. It's sort of slightly folky, if you like. Slightly, slightly, very slightly. But very cool, catchy, heavy, melodic grooves. So well worth a listen if you enjoy that sort of uh, metal. Number 14. Foredoomed. Ordeal. No idea who these foredoomed guys are, but... I really enjoyed this album. Very melodic, uh, very catchy death metal. Um, lots of keyboards, lots of melodic runs, riffs. Uh, yeah, what's not to like here? Very catchy. Number 13, Paganizer, Land of Weeping Souls. Yes, my old mate Roger. Roger Johansson with another one of his projects. This one is a heavy, grooving, uh, classic death metal sound. Vocals perfect as usual from Roger. Very heavy, very grooving, catchy death metal. Yeah, what's not to like here? Number 12 is Nerve Cell Past Present Torture. This one is a savage and heavy death metal grooving album. Superb sound as well. This is the kind of death metal that I live for. Catchy, heavy and groovy. With a crystal clear, punchy sound. Number 11. Carnal Decay. You owe you pay. Nice title. This album is probably the heaviest on my list. It is super brutal heavy. It's Pretty fast, but also very groovy. It's also pretty slick. And there's also a slight hardcore flavour, which would normally turn me right off. But in this one, I just feel it fits perfectly to be to have that real angry, savage flavour. Like, they really want to rip your bloody head off and spit down a hole. So that's Carnal Decay. And the album is You Owe You Pay. Number 10. The top 10. Dying Fetus. Wrong one to fuck with. Yeah, it's probably the best Dying Fetus album ever, in my opinion. Uh, many great riffs in this. Heavy grooves. Nice, brutal vocals. What's not to like here? Slamming, groovy death metal with a good technical level as well. So there you go, Dying Fetus. Check that one. Number nine, Lock Up, Demonization. Yeah, Lock Up is heavy as hell. It's probably just as heavy as Carnal Decay, although I did say Carnal Decay is heavier, but 
this is a heavy thing. Very brutal, earth-shattering riffage. Plus blasting, of course, with the grindcore elements. Uh, yeah, super brutal. And it's catchy as well, with all that brutality. So that's Lock Up, Demonization at number nine. Number eight is Decrepit Birth, Axis Mundi. This one is a tech death release, pretty melodic, very catchy technical riffs, very fast double kicking, enjoyable stuff. When you listen to it, you really enjoy the musicianship of the band. Number seven, Arch Spire, Relentless Mutation. Absolutely insane, this one. Super crazy technical riffs. Stop, start, bouncing here, there and everywhere. Superb stuff. Which could be higher, really. But um, anyway, I had six more. Number six. Embrace the Dawn, The Effigist. This one is another one of my favourite Tech Death albums of the year. Very fast, flawless sound. Very catchy. Superbly fluid tech death. Number five, the top five. Here we go. Incarnator, Argumentum ad Ignoratium. This one is a death worship band. Death the band, Chuck Schuldiner. They're very hard to find these days. So when a good one comes along like Incarnator, you've got to give them the time of day as a huge death fan. These guys are, you know, I think they've had a few albums now and they increase the death quotient on this one. I mean, there's a lot of death riffs all over the shop. The vocals, not amazing, but okay. No one listens to this type of music for amazing vocals. Uh, yeah, very good. Made my top five, what can I say? Number four. A legend of the scene, suffocation of the dark light. Yeah, very cool stuff from the Suffos, veterans of the scene. Um, catchy riffs, urgent, technical, bouncy riffing. Enjoyable stuff, good vocals. Um, yeah, it could be one of their best albums for me. I mean, I'm not huge on old school suffocations you know i prefer the more modern better produced stuff to be honest but um yeah this this is perfect for me suffocation yes the top three another legend obituary self-titled yes this album is the tops obituary really brought it home this time you know the grooves, some of the grooves on this thing, wow, they make you want to, you know, knock yourself out basically, run, in, run through walls. And John Tardy's vocals, they're on top form in this one, you know, they're on top form. You can understand what he's going on about and they still sound mean and sick, super sick. Yes, obituary, self-titled. Is it their best album ever? Of course, people will say not. They'll say slowly we rot or, you know, cause of death or whatever, or, or the end complete. To me, to me, this is their best album ever, in my opinion. It's like, to me, it sounds like a definitive obituary album. It's got everything that obituary is about. Maybe it's not as sick as the early albums, but it's sick enough. Plus, it's super catchy. You can't go wrong with this one. Number two. Inanimate Existence Underneath a Melting Sky. This one, this one blew me over. This is superb technical death. Super fast tech riffs. You know, super clean production. Just amazing. I mean, the songwriting is not like super catchy. But the way they play and the way they 
fit the vocals around the riffs absolutely superb i mean just perfect this is the kind of stuff that i listen to a lot when it comes to death metal and my list contains a lot of similar bands like arch spire embrace the dawn decrepit birth all those type of bands so and finally we reach the number one the legendary the one and only cannibal corpse yes red before black well at first when i first heard the album i was like yeah it's a good cannibal corpse album but maybe it's not as good as the la one or two of the last few with uh corpse grinder and then the i started getting hooked i was hooked on this I was playing these songs over and over again. I was thinking, well, why did I say it's not as good when I'm playing the songs more and more? Then I realised this is one hell of a catchy death metal album. There's some sick shit going on on this album, trust me. Heavy, grooving, chunky riffage, catchiness, well-placed vocals from Corpse Grinder interesting songs uh song um progressions um what can i say it's just even got some thrash in it at times you know the cannibal corpse you can rely on them they they just give the fans what they want they don't mess about they just give you pure death metal you know classy death metal big thick grooves catchy head banging sections they just give you what you need. So there you have it. Cannibal Corpse is the number one album of this year, in my opinion. Okay, till the next time. See you later.